Welcome again, welcome again to another episode of the WSXN podcast where a United Africa is an undisputed Africa. So, let's jump right ahead. Um, America again is at it again. They're trying to, you know, this time they're trying to they're pissing off Tanzania. And um, this is about, this is more about food produce. They are telling, giving out memos saying the Africa, the Tanzania, not Africa, that Tanzania going to have food, a uh, massive hunger issue in this year because of flood and because of drought and all this nonsense, which is false because Af- Tanzania is almost, is almost fully self-sufficient when it comes down to, um, to their food products. So now they, they issued a memo statement they're going to send food products to the schools and to certain areas in, um, in Tanzania. So now the Minister of Agriculture gets angry, and he writes fully so because you're peddling false rumors about my country. So he responded. So let me give you the, the, what he responded by saying. Tanzania Agriculture Minister Hussein Mohamed Bashi has urged the U.S. government to buy Tanzanian produce instead of sending heavily subsidized food aid to the country, which is making significant progress towards achieving food self-sufficiency. The minister's comments were in response to an announcement from the U.S. Embassy in Dar, in Dar es Salaam yesterday revealing that the U.S. Department of Agriculture, in partnership with the NGO Global Communities, has donated for fortified rice, pinto beans, and sunflower seeds oil sources directly from the American farmers to schools in Tanzania, Donam region. So, imagine that. America trying to force food on you when you have food that you can you can produce and sell to them. So if you want to help the country, don't send subsidized food. Buy from them. Then your money can get circulated and then you can get, and you get fresh produce. And remember, American African go, African farmers don't use GMO seeds on the continent. And that's part of the change because why? Here comes President Ruto accepting GMO seeds to trans, to plant and to plant for seeds and maize and rice and all this in this country and this is why tell you these are when puppets are put in place to benefit not to the citizens but to the colonizers and this is a, a perfect example of President Ruto accepting GMO seed which is banned basically on the entire continent so imagine if this GMO seed gets into Kenya and then Kenya it get passed and, and go over to Tanzania Tanzanian produce is much sweeter, much more pure, much more, much more rich. Not only Tanzania, the entire African continent produce is much more natural because they don't use all these GMO seeds and all these special chemicals to spray these. Um, it's grown naturally in Africa. So that's why even when President uh, Museveni of Uganda travel, he travel with his own um fruits fruits and kind of guys when it goes to um anywhere in the world he said that the food don't have no taste me personally i don't eat fruits without seeds because they never have a lot of seedless grapes and seedless this one i don't want nothing seedless i don't like gmo products i tend not to buy um, um american grown products or i like to use locally made locally grown produce like from dominica um, trinidad jamaica you know grenada and all these other countries send kids where they have naturally grown produce where I like to get my fruits and from God. And I'm not into this GMO thing. Anyway, so back to it. So listen to what Daniel, the microbiologist, um, who is overseeing this GMO in Kenya. Say a thing about this. Take a listen. They compared with what they need. They looked at issues of climate change because you have much less land that can produce what you need. You also um, have the challenge of you need drought resistant crops and you have also biological stresses to, such as insects, pests, etc. to your crops, growing populations, growing youth populations, childhood malnutrition. And they figured maybe if they add this arm to the agricultural sector, it can improve. Well, let's see. Biotech experts say, despite the concerns, careful measures are taken before a country allows the use of GMO agriculture. When people work on uh, GM crops, etc., or GM foods, as you like to say, they go through a process of regulation. So it's not a wild, wild west where anyone can just decide to clone whatever they want and plant it. No, you have, even in Tanzania, you have a whole national biosafety framework. And it has a process about how to get uh, permits, and they go through what gene you want to put in, 
history of that gene, the side, potential side effects of that gene, and the even criteria that if uh, the gene is known historically to have allergic reactions, in you, it's usually a no-no. So there you have it. He's all for it, which I find odd because who is the one funding this project, for one? Because if you're accepting it, it's, it's been funded by somebody. And why would you give a country, give your country, uh, give the Americans access to your f provision of food? Because what happens? If you step out of line, let's say 10 years from now, when you're fully GMO, and the Americans come and say, um, I, want to, I want you to do this for me, and then you refuse, then they say, okay, we won't give you any more seed. What happened? You're solely dependent on them to get your grains. While you kill out all your naturally grown produce, you're accepting GMO seeds, so you have one. So if I said, anybody who feeds you, owns you, basically. So if I tell you, do, do this, do that, you can't, you can't get, ask me a question, you have to do it because what? I'm the one who's in charge of feeding your country. And this is what these guys are not understanding. But listen to what um one of the um defenders of um of using locally grown seeds and from from tanzania said as well and our border are very porous in a way we cannot stop maize from kenya coming to tanzania there is no way as you're speaking right now there are a lot of maize going to kenya which are being done informally and we expect the same way it will be done from kenya to Tanzania. and since their maize will be very cheap and as you know, farmers, they're always looking for cheaper things. Farmers all uh, citizens are looking for, 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 you know, to reduce the cost of, of, of living. So in any way, the maize from Kenya will come, to, will come to Tanzania. In 2021, Tanzania's government canceled research trials involving genetically modified organisms. Instead, it put in place tighter scrutiny of improved genetically modified seeds. So there you have it. He's 100% right what he's saying. We need to be independent when it comes down to Africa and accepting all these colonizers' aid. Because number one, aid, you're going to suffer on two fronts. One front, you're going to be dependent on them. And the second front, you're going to kill off the local farmers. So then they can't get to feed the family and then they become dependent on the state. And they have to depend on, on food. Like you have to be standing. Imagine you, know, you have to be standing up by by um go buy a truck when food comes into five people to get a bag of, a bag of green rice or a bag of this. It's happening like in Somalia, where the the, the Red Cross are bringing in food stuff for them, which is I never like that idea because that's a way to control the population. So big up shout out to Tanzania for standing their grounds and saying nope. The Tanzania end up putting more restrictions, they're putting more stringent laws and banning GMO products, GMO seeds enter their country, which I 100% agree with. Uganda have done the same thing. Um, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Ghana, even though he's a puppet, so far, Ghana is not importing any GMO seeds to, um, and they, um, to replace their naturally African seeds. That's, that's African seeds, because that's what it is. So. They must follow in the footsteps of Tanzania, expand, invest more in securing and becoming food self-sufficient. Like, as in Burkina Faso doing the same thing, Mali is doing the same thing, um, Niger is doing the same thing. So there's multiple countries on this trajectory of being food self-reliant. And we have to continue on that so that no one can use that to hold us, our feet to the, to the, to the fire. So we can, we can refuse to do whatever they ask, because they don't have no control over what you eat, over what you wear, over you know, uh, over your laws, and you, you don't accept aid. Because you see, aid, heavily subsidized food means putting people to work. Because if someone can get something for free, they will take it. I can get it cheaper, they will take it. And the GMO seeds, the GMO seeds will be most likely cheaper. So a farmer want to um, have more profit margin so they will accept cheaper cheaper grains as well but if the country put it in place they cannot use it then they cannot use it we just have to make sure it's cheap for them so they can make a profit so whenever time they they they, they reap their their um their yield they can make a living from it and survive and 
free their families as well. So. I'm 100% uh, um, agreeing with um, Hussein Muhammad. Ban all GMO seeds on the continent, and we're going to stick to our own. So you cannot force us to do anything we don't want to do. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section. As always, tell a friend, tell a friend, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Boom.